the ghost of Kiev, the heroes of Snake Island, Jenk Uger? We got a very interesting show for you beautiful people. Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America! And you ain't black. I don't know what I said. Oh. The first time ever any... What are you people? We're Americans. We are Americans indeed. I still got my old, apparently I still I still have my old uh, uh, thingy from my discussion a couple days ago. Still, still here. Welcome, dear listener. Welcome. My name is Finn. My partner in crime is not with me currently. Um, and I am going to be discussing, uh, to be honest with you, I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit confused. Uh, maybe you could say surprised. I don't want to say disappointed because I don't want to sound uh, like a parent. But holy smokes, um, there's a lot of folks who are, um, in my opinion, completely losing it right now. Um, I, I have no idea what the heck is going on with... Um, with folks at this moment. Now, uh, we, we already shot a video about this situation. You will see that I have the, uh, the Ukrainian flag here and the Russian flag here. And that's because I support both people. Peoples. Um, I refuse to demonize Russian people, normal Russian people, and I refuse to demonize... Um, normal Ukrainian people. All Russian people are not um, horrible imperialists and all Ukrainians um, are are not Nazis, although many in their in their military are obviously Nazis who don't have a problem killing innocent people. And obviously Russia has its uh, has its issues as well. Now <laughs> guys uh, I, I got to tell you, here's a little story about me. After 9-11, I did not die in 9-11. Rest in peace to her. After 9-11, I was infuriated. I was up in Maine when the ta when the second towers, when the second tower fell. Um, I actually saw on live TV when the when the uh, second airliner hit the. Um, hit the uh, second World Trade Center. And at, at that point, I knew we were at war. And I also actually knew that it was bin Laden. I, I, I put new quotations, not because I'm a conspiracy theorist, but because obviously you couldn't know at the specific time it was bin Laden. But I was a weird kid. I was watching the news, so I knew it was bin Laden. And, and I, I uh, my girlfriend at the time, though, was in New York. And so... It was a really emotional situation because I did not know when, you know, we didn't know that the attacks in New York were just going to be limited to Manhattan. Um, so it was, a, it was a pretty crazy time for me. I couldn't get in contact with her. Obviously, I didn't have a cell phone at that time, yada, yada, yada. So that feeling almost always stuck with me. I got home and there's Fox News running on a, on a cycle um, U.S. citizens jumping, uh, jumping from the World Trade Center. It's extremely emotional, um, to see that. My brother actually, uh, funny story about my brother. He was actually supposed to be in that area and he was work for late that day, late for work that day. Um, that's a true story. So, um, obviously 9-11 was an extremely, extremely, um, emotional time for me and Fox News did a great job of and I'm not I don't know if they did it on purpose I don't know what their role was in concert with the government but I was thoroughly propagandized by Fox News all you saw was the planes crashing into the buildings every time that they they would go to another segment plane crashing into the building or you saw um the next thing that I saw was Green Berets coming out of these uh, new new fast vehicles or whatever. If you if you have any, you know, whatever. So, I got married at an extremely young age. Uh, and in my, at my honeymoon, this is <laughs> this is probably one of the uh, 
signs uh, uh, of things to come. At my honeymoon, I, I left my uh, newly uh, married wife in the hotel because as we were pulling, we were in Key West, Florida, as we were pulling up, I saw a recruiting station. I've never told this story before, so there you are, dear listener. Um, I saw a recruiting station. So I left her in the hotel, snuck out, and went to the recruiting station to talk to this lady. She gave me this little pre-test or whatever, whatever. And she said, what do you want to do? And I said, of course, I want to I want to join the infantry. I want to, you know, I want to... People going to have to die for this shit. She said, why would you want to do that? It was then she looked at my paperwork or whatnot, and she said, uh, this seems to be more like something you would do a really, really good job at. And then she showed me this thing called uh, psychological operations. Dear listener, what we're about to review, to me, to me, seems to be um, a clear and obvious case of the Ukrainian government and our our government, strangely, or at least at minimum, our media um, taking part in psychological operations. Here is Off Guardian. You guys know the Guardian. I guess this is uh, Off Guardian. Um, and. We're just going to go through these because some of this stuff is unfreaking believable. Unbelievable. Here we go. Uh, let me know when you guys see it. Uh, it should be it should be live now. Seven fake news stories coming out of Ukraine. <laughs> I kid you not. Seven fake news stories coming out of Ukraine. That's that's what the thingamajig says and we're just gonna go down through them we're just gonna go down through them because some of this shit is unbelievable dear listener uh here we go number one the ghost of kiev i don't know if you guys have heard of this guy the ghost of kiev this is a guy fighter jet pilot whatnot who um single-handedly took down six count them six um russian jet fighters early Friday morning, it was reported that a single Ukrainian plane, a MiG-29, was patrolling the skies above Kiev. The English-speaking press called the unnamed pilot the Ghost of Kiev and claimed he had downed six Russian jets in air-to-air -air combat in less than two days. SubhanAllah, less than 48 hours. Wow. Making him an official ace fighter, probably one of the fastest to ever earn such a title. The trouble is there is almost no evidence, or as Newsweek says, zero evidence that the Ghost of Kiev exists. By the way, I'm saying Kiev, because apparently Kiev is the Ukrainian way of pronouncing Kiev, and Kiev is the way that the Russians pronounce it, and you guys know, since 2014, there has been a concerted racist, nationalist, whatever is you want to call it, effort to pretend, to, to, to completely Russia wash, or completely wash away any semblance of Russian heritage or whatever from Ukraine. So that's why everybody supposedly is saying Kiev instead of Kiev. I'm going to say Kiev because uh, Zangief, the, the Russian dude on Street Fighter 2, when he would slam you, he'd say Kiev because he was still part of the Soviet Union. <laughs> I think actually it's Street Fighter 2. I don't know, Jamie. It was in Street Fighter 2. You'd still fly over to the Soviet Union. I don't think they, you'd fly over to Russia. I'm not sure. Or they'd say Russia, but it was Soviet Union. I'm not sure. Anyway, Kiev. Anyway. The ghost of Kiev, there's zero evidence that this man exists. And the idea that he took down six planes, look, I'm not in the Air Force, I don't know. But, um, yeah, apparently he already has a uh, his own Wikipedia page. I was in a debate one time uh, with a guy, and uh, I was quoting Encyclopedia Britannica, and I was co quoting a bioethicist and all this. It was a moderated debate, and he quoted uh, Wikipedia, and I said... Uh, I said, my brother, Wikipedia is not a valid source to use in a debate. This is why you can privately put up a Wikipedia page. There's a, I think there's like a CIA or MI6 guy that, that does a Jimmy Tours page. Uh, a video alleged to be the ghost in combat shared by the Ukrainian Armed Forces. <laughs> Here we go. The Ukrainian Armed Forces re- the Ukrainian psychological operations apparatus is confirmed to actually be footage taken from a video game. 
Yes, dear listener, a video game. So the Ukrainian Armed Forces shared a video of the supposed ghost of Kiev. And the man, to this moment, doesn't exist yet that we can verify. And the, the footage that they showed came from a video game. Here's number two. Russian planes flying over Kiev. I, I saw this one. I saw this one myself pretty recently. It was very, very fascinating. Uh, yeah, you, you know we're going to get into that, CB. You know you know we're going to get into that, uh, CB. Um, here, here, uh, here, here we go. We continue. We continue. <laughs> uh, uh, as Hell says, he did absolutely blast at those airplanes in a video game. <laughs> yeah, the ghost of Kiev is a 13-year-old kid named Mikhail in his uh, in in a, in a basement somewhere. Uh, playing Call of Duty or whatever the hell uh, the video game was over there. Okay, uh, guys, we continue. Russian planes flying over Kiev. I actually saw this one. I actually saw this one myself, actually. A lot of people have been sharing short video of Russian planes allegedly flying, uh, low flying over the city of Kiev. The Times used it uh, used it as a still for, for in, in, in their story, will sanctions stop a Russian shell? Are sanctions going to stop a Russian shell? The problem is that it's not Kiev, it's Moscow, and it's not today, it's two years ago. It's footage of what is likely a rehearsal for the 2020 uh, Day of Victory Parade flyover. There you go. Yep. That that was from 2020, dear listener. But uh, the Times used it Will sanction stop a Russian shell? And this is why, you know, some of this is tongue-in-cheek, right? Some of this is funny. But what is the point of a question like that, dear listener? What's the point of a question like that? Is that not to stoke up the uh, the emotions of the American populace and say, Hey, uh, oh, sanctions aren't enough. We need to go and kill these people. Isn't that what these people were telling us? They were telling us that, uh, remember that whole lie about Trump and the Russians were working with the tally and they had some alliance to kill U.S. soldiers and that silly uh, shit-lib neoliberal Democrat guy said, we need to go over there and put a bunch of Russian and tally bounty bags on the ground in Afghanistan. Some of this shit is funny, but some of this is being used... To subliminally get you to support war. We continue. All this is one of my favorite ones. This is my favorite one. Uh, I was in a conversation. <laughs> I was in a conversation, and I said, uh, "Remember the video we shot, and we were talking about the ridiculous, ridiculous decision by Parliament, the Ukrainian Parliament." to amend their constitution so as to move them closer and closer to NATO and the EU, thereby uh, inherently threatening Russia. We know that that is a threatening posture. Uh, now, uh, my brother Rig disagrees with me. He said, he said that uh, Putin didn't mention safety in his speech on Monday, which to this moment, Rig, I don't understand why he would say that. He mentioned NATO over 40 times in his speech. But when the silly folks over there in the Ukrainian parliament voted to amend their constitution to get closer and closer to NATO, to flirt more with NATO and psychologically and, and uh, what did uh, Burns call it, neurologically disrupt the, 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 the Russians uh, to threaten them even more, I made the comment, somebody said, Oh, Vin, if you're if you're saying that that justifies Putin invading, uh, you're victim blaming. And I said, I'm not victim blaming because none of those folks in parliament are going to feel the wrath of what's going to happen. And somebody said to me, <laughs> somebody said to me, well, you know, Vin, I saw one of those guys walking around with an AK-47. And I said, <laughs> really? Really? 
You saw one of those folks walking around with an AK-47, and that's what I said. Like, like we saw, we saw Saddam walking around with an AK-47. This is standard uh, bullshit, and these people are not really even trying. This is standard. I'm gonna propagandize you and try to act like I'm hard, when in reality we know you really not that hard, bro. Now look. Here we have Zelensky visiting the troops. I saw a meme uh, a couple hours ago. It says, it doesn't matter what you say. Everybody's girl has a secret crush on Zelensky. <laughs> My girl don't got no crush on Zelensky. Fuck out of here. Fuck wrong with you. Look at this. Now, I'm sure Applejack's girl don't got no crush on Zelensky neither. <laughs> we gangsters over here. But look, look at this. Possibly no politician in history has had a PR makeover quite as fast as Vladimir Zelensky. Last week, he was just some guy. This week, he's a war hero. Yeah, a couple years ago, 2019, 2020, he was sitting with Trump begging for more weapons to kill his own citizens. I mean, Russian separatists. Sorry. We're going we're gonna to make a hero out of this guy. He's been complicit with murdering his own people. His own people. Now all of a sudden he's a war hero. Unfreaking real. Last week he was just some guy. This week he's a war hero. There's talk of building statues of the man. Subhanallah. A not at all staged leaked phone call had him turning down the U.S. offer to airlift him to safety. <laughs> I love this guy. Uh, or this lady. Not at all staged. A leaked phone call. That had him turning down a U.S. offer to airlift him to safety. Here's Rick. Oh, he mentioned NATO. NATO. I was positing that he used NATO as an excuse other than uh, ambitions like a cop saying, I feared for my life. Bullshit, Rig. That's not, number one, that's not what you said, bro. You said, you, you implied that it had nothing to do with safety. You said it's disingenuous for anyone to think that NATO... Uh, would be a viable reason for him to to invade or something like that. I'm going to read the actual quote that you that you stated because let's not reinvent history here. Um, and then I asked you, really? So all these people are disingenuous? Tulsi Gabbard, uh, uh, Noam Chomsky, Glenn Greenwald, all these people are disingenuous. That was the conversation we had, my brother. Let, let's not let's not remix let's not remix history here. That's what happened. But I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you because I, I do want you to answer my questions because I had some follow-up questions for you. I'm going to get to you after this. But here's Zelensky. Twitter is dotted with people sharing photos of him in combat fatigues, comparing him favorably to Trump and Trudeau and asking what other leaders would fight alongside their troops. Now, again, I knew this was complete bullshit. I knew it was bullshit. I told you guys. I told you guys that this was bullshit. But it was even more bullshit than I thought. Listen to this. Here's Danielle Candela. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. This is President Zelensky. He's a brave man fighting shoulder to shoulder with his people. This man was blackmailed and extorted by Trump. No, he wasn't. Who is a corrupt criminal and a coward. So, yes. If I have to pay more for a gallon of gas, democracy... Here it is. Democracy is worth it. Democracy is worth it. Why? There he is. Look at this man on his gangster. Look at him strutting with that thug strut. He's got the flak jacket. He's ready for war. Actually, the problem is that these photos are almost all a year old taken when he visited the troops last April. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky visits positions of armed forces near the front line with Russian back separatists in Donbass region, Ukraine, April 9th. Russian backed separatists. That would be his own people. These were the people that he killed. 14,000 of them with the help of far right Nazis. These are Nazis that he was visiting and uh, back padding. These were Nazis who massacred. 14,000 people since 2014, violating the Minsk Agreement, 81% of whom were civilians were not part of the uh, Russian military. So I know you're already going to say that. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and, 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 and trump that argument immediately. 
What? Zelinsky is a failed actor and comedian. Yeah! But uh, that's not saying he's not acting. He's acting uh, like a, a good leader here. Did the Ukrainian uh, media or military say, no, 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 guys, this picture that's circulating, even even the big homie Julian Edelman, shout out to Julian Edelman. Uh, New England played shit, Julian Edelman was like, oh my God, look at this guy, he's a real man, he's standing by the troops, bullshit. He came to the troops to give aid and comfort to them as they were massacring their own people. That's a fact. It's a fact. There it is right there. That's Reuters. That's Reuters. 2000, there it goes, April 9th in the Donbass region. Uh, here's the power station explosion. To be honest with you, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I didn't know about this one. So I'm just going to skip it. This footage claiming to show Ukrainian ground forces downing Russian aircraft also went viral recently, even appearing on Spanish news. It's from a video game. <laughs> Another video game. Another video game. Now, I'm going to skip number six because you guys know. Actually, let, let, let's, just, let's just hang out. Let's just hang out because we got to do it. Okay. Uh, now, Vin, hold on. Now, I got to stop here because Rig is, a, Rig is an honest actor. Rig is an honest actor. Rig said, Vin, you're right. I did say Putin didn't mention safety. My bad, bro. I still stand my diagnosis of his intent. Okay. This is why I do this show. Um, people were telling me, listen, Donald Trump is dangerous. Donald Trump is dangerous. I said, man, Donald Trump ain't dangerous. He's just some talking head, blah, 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 blah. And then January 6th happened. <laughs> so you know what I did? I said, holy shit. And I shot a video and I said, my bad, guys. I was wrong. Donald Trump is fucking dangerous. Holy shit. And please don't tell me that Donald Trump had nothing to do with January 6th again. He waited 1.5 hours. He waited 1.5 hours to get those uh, get those National Guard in to, to help support the uh, the Capitol Police. That means he's obviously complicit, and in my mind, that's an act of treason. He should spend the rest of his days in prison. That's my take on Mr. Trump. My point is, I was wrong. So before January 6th, before the sun was able to go down on January 6th, I shot a video saying I was wrong. That's what we do on Middle America. So my brother Vit Rig made us uh, uh, a miscalculation, and he came back and he corrected it. That's what we do here, because this is not about ego. This is about trying to find the truth. Now, whether or not I agree with my brother doesn't matter. As to the intent, he corrected the record, so I'm not going to even talk about it anymore because he corrected the record. Now, 80% of all Ukrainian infrastructure is bombed by own forces, bridges, etc. when they show fire and distance coming from Russian invasion. Also true. Now, I'm not going to get into everything with everybody, but uh, trust me. I would bet my firstborn that hell knows what the hell she's talking about. And if you say otherwise, I want to see your bona fides. But she's right. Now, guys, you know, <laughs> you know we got to do this one. <laughs> you know we got to do this one. Here's number six. <laughs> Here's number six. Subhanallah, guys. Here we go. First, let let's let's check out this wonderful video. Shout out to Jackson Hinkle. This this kid is killing shit right now. Jackson Hinkle, whoever he is. Maybe maybe I can get an interview with the homie. May I try to get an interview with Jackson Hinkle and and. Uh, See what we can do here. Here, here, here's Jackson. Here's <laughs> here's Jackson Hinkle. So their last words were, "This is it, Russian warship. Go f yourself." Russian warship, go f yourself. This has to do with the Snake Island massacre. Let's see so if I can play it again. So their last words were, "This is it, Russian warship. Go f yourself." The tweet has been deleted. I don't know why the tweet has been deleted, but okay. Russian warship, go F yourself. Russian warship, go F yourself. Okay. This was the first uh, major propaganda... Um, what did it say? This is the first major propaganda narrative following Russia's advance into Ukrainian territory. Allegedly leaked audio. <laughs> 
Nobody thought to themselves, how the hell? But we continue. Allegedly leaked audio showed Ukrainian border guards on Tiny Snake Island in the Black Sea communicating with a Russian warship. Upon being told to surrender, the guards say, Russian warship, go fuck yourself. I mean, really? Really, guys? <laughs> really? <laughs> I believed it. I believed it. Yeah, whatever. I just got done watching that Time uh, Magazine article last year that was talking about the far-right militia. The far-right militia that was, uh, 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 you know, all up in Ukraine and marching in the streets and being celebrated and all that shit with their Nazi insignia. So I thought to myself, well, those boys look pretty determined. So I could see them saying, hey, go fuck yourself. And then dying in a blaze of, in a blaze of glory. I could see that happening. The Western press reported that all 13 of the men were killed. And the Ukrainian government released a statement saying they would all be awarded posthumous honors. However, while the supposedly fallen heroes were being canonized all over the Western world... Russia was reporting that they had not been killed at all, but taken alive and unharmed back to the mainland. Now, dear listener, 43 minutes ago, 43 minutes ago, um, I was able to, I was scouring CNN because one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to check. I wanted to check to see if, uh, if, if, if this if this situation had developed at all so your brother scoured cnn now <laughs> guys <laughs> i looked up cnn because i wanted to see hey maybe there's a development of this story because you know look I, i'm not going to say that you're lying right but maybe there's a development to the story Here's a development to the story on CNN 43 minutes ago, guys. <laughs> the defenders of Snake Island in the Black Sea who were initially feared dead. No, they were not feared dead initially. No, CNN. That's not how I heard the story. I was I was I was in the, I was in the bed with, with with the wife. We were looking she was reading her book. I was looking sh stuff up, okay? And I saw, I, I saw this big thing on state on, on uh, CNN.com, Russian warship, go F yourself, okay? First of all, I don't even know, I don't even know now if that's the actual conversation that actually happened, okay? Look at this, guys. The defenders of Snake Island, who were initially feared dead, are alive and well, according to the U Na Ukrainian Navy. Mashallah Tabaraka, excellent. On Monday, a statement from the Navy said that the soldiers on the island, also known as Zimni Island, repelled two attacks by Russian forces, but in the end, were forced to surrender due to lack of ammunition. <laughs> due to lack of ammunition. Dear listener, dear listener, Everybody who surrenders, who has ever surrendered, surrenders due to lack of ammunition <laughs> or inferior ammunition. If, if you had superior ammunition or equivalent ammunition, you wouldn't surrender. Uh, the, why... Why did the Japanese surrender after we dropped the, the bomb on them? Which isn't funny, but why did they surrender? They surrendered because of lack of ammunition. That is to say, they didn't have munitions that were equivalent to what we had. And so we just we just destroyed Nagasaki and Hiroshima and they said, shit, if we keep going, these kids we have there's a lot there's an obvious imbalance here, we have to surrender. That's why everyone surrenders. <laughs> they surrendered uh, due to lack of uh, uh, of ammunition. Holy shit! As CB says, this has got to be uh, Russian propaganda. Has to be. 
I see that the Ukrainian ambassador said that Russia have used the father of all bombs, thermo-explosive. I have yet to see evid any, any evidence and remain skeptical. Listen, listen, guys, here's the point. We, we've had a little bit of fun. I'm happy that uh, those, those folks on Snake Island, um, I'm happy that they, they surrendered. You know why? I'm pro-life. And I don't know if you guys remember what the Russians said, but even in the clip, the, the I'm saying the doctored, the asterisk clip, okay, where the Russians were telling them to surrender, they were saying, let's just avoid any meaningless bloodshed. Just put your arms down. We're in a warship. You guys are on a tiny little island. You guys know you can't fuck with us militarily right now. Just surrender. That's what they said. That doesn't sound like a bloodthirsty group of uh, fascists to me. Sounds to me like these people were trying pretty hard not to, uh, you know, have meaningless bloodletting in the uh, in in the in this war. Now we're, we're gonna play it again. Here's CNN. Look, CNN did this giant story about this thing, right? They did this giant story. And let's see if they do the, uh, a similar kind of story. It, it, look, there's, there, there's, look, look at this. Here we go. A dark episode, y'all. Uh, as a moment of heroism, uh, Snake Island off the coast of Odessa, where we were yesterday, where we heard explosions at dawn. Off the coast of Odessa, is this the same Odessa where they killed, they burned those Russian uh, protesters alive? Is that the same Odessa? Nah, it's a genuine question. Because I know that they did that to those people. They burned those people alive. Um, which sparked the entire, uh, we need to get out of, we, we need to be our own independent state, right? Somebody confirm that for me, please. But let's continue born in the distance and they persisted intermittently throughout the morning always hard to know exactly what was being hit some of them were ferocious we could you know hear their impact from miles away and snake island is off the coast of odessa some distance in fact and appears to have been uh, attacked by a russian warship and on it uh, the population is basically just ukrainian soldiers defending it here's the intercept of the conversation between them and the Russian. look at look look <laughs> look at all this concern first of all first of all look not to be insensitive not to be insensitive dear listener but this is war russian forces that approach them i am a russian military ship proposing to put down arms immediately to avoid bloodshed and unjustified deaths. In worst case, you will be hit with a bomb strike. I am repeating, I am a Russian military ship proposing to put down your arms or you will be hit. Please acknowledge, and then of course, the, the heroic Russian warship, go fuck yourself, which is... Okay, if you believe that, then okay. Okay, I don't, I don't believe that that's the actual original audio. Okay, but my point is, even there, even there, you can see the Russian military saying, "Let's avoid meaningless bloodshed," and it says unjustified death. That's what they're saying. They're saying, "Let's avoid meaningless bloodshed and unjustified death." Does that sound does that sound like a, uh, a a bloodthirsty fascistic invasion to you dear listener now listen Russia Russia has uh, psychological operators and they have KGB and other groups that are designed simply to, to brainwash you and trick you into thinking something so I'm not gonna sit here and canonize the Russians and say the Russians are amazingly great people. Um, um, but the Azov, the Azov battalion are absolutely Nazis. Those are facts. 
and somebody got put in Facebook jail for, for telling us this. That's what muggers say, Vin. Uh, I've got... <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, your, your point is well taken, but I'll tell you something. Between the way we invade countries and the way... Do you remember the shock and awe campaign? Don't you remember when we invaded Iraq and we had a shock and awe campaign, propaganda campaign about the might of the U.S. military were bombing the shit out of people, massacring civilians on live TV? We weren't saying, hey guys, let's avoid unjustified deaths and meaningless bloodshed. We weren't that merciful. Americans, we weren't even that merciful to civilians, much less these guys being that merciful to combatants. That's my point. My point is, at minimum, the Russians were nicer to to those folks than we were to Iraqi civilians who had done and could do us no harm. Meanwhile, these guys are on the border with Russia. They've already demonstrated years of hostility to Russia, and massacring 14,000 of them, burning some of them alive, chopping their heads off, setting them in wooden crates back to their mothers. All this shit was well documented. So I I need to understand. Maybe somebody can call in. You know what? Let's call in. I'll put I'll put a link. Only people who disagree with me, okay? I'll put a link in the chat. And if you believe the the current narrative on uh on 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 Ukraine and Russia i need you to call up and tell me why it is cool for our media to to participate in the propaganda efforts of another state onto our citizenry why is our media and our social media what is it twitter is it twitter and Facebook, aren't they supposed to be fact-checking? I cannot tell you. I run a channel, Middle America, facebook.com backslash America Middle. I cannot tell you how many times something has been taken down or we have been suspended or X, Y, and Z because um, of fake news. So why is Twitter and Facebook at all allowing for this fake news to circulate, to propagandize people? And why is what why why is the U.S. military, um, why is the U.S. media, I'm sorry, participating in in all of this in this bullshit i need somebody to help me with that i need to know somebody could call somebody call in tell me right there, there there's a link right there and you can call in and explain to me why this is happening and why we're cool with this I thought Facebook and Twitter were all about factual news and things of that nature and trying as best they could to be as factual as possible. How come I'm not seeing, how come Facebook and Twitter allowed all that bullshit to get cycled to millions and millions of people? Uh huh. You know, Stalin's favorite move was the circus about a black child becoming uh, welcomed by Soviets. Uh, I don't know. Oh, his favorite movie. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yes, I do know. Yeah, we started bombing Somalia again. But I'm sure, you know, listen, uh, Shis Percy, I'm sure that we're going to see a bunch of Somali flags. Just like we had a bunch of Niger flags and a bunch of flags from the Horn of Africa. And I'm sure we're going to have a bunch of flags in Yemen. For all those, all those, all those people that we've just just massacred or participated in their massacre, I'm sure there's going to be flags for that. Don't defend hatred and destruction. I'm just saying, who gives a fuck about the large shit? Like that doesn't matter. I don't know what that means. Uh, let me know how my uh, let me know how my mic is sounding now, guys. Thank you, by the way, for the the letting me know that my mic keeps cutting in and out. I spent a pretty penny for this device, and it's it's uh, it has not served me well, dear listener. Yeah, we're 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 occupied, yeah. and uh, it's the Russians that are the problem. And then when you point out all the horror 
that we participated in and that we're supporting all around the world, people start saying, well, that's whataboutism. No, whataboutism is a term that's just made up so that you don't have to be intellectually consistent. I'm not going to say honest. I'm going to say the term whataboutism is designed to protect you from intellectual consistency and logical rigor. If, if, if you're upset about people invading a sovereign nation and killing civvies, which you should be, then you should be upset when everybody does it. Not when it affects a European group. I'm not even going to get into the overarching ramifications of why all of a sudden everybody's so upset about this group of people. But you didn't give a damn about what's happening currently in Yemen or Somalia or Niger or Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan. I'm not even going to get into that one, dear listener. Why would he side with a Nazi? That is a very, very good question. That's why that's why I, I kept posting that super chat. Zelensky is is uh, of Jewish heritage. I don't understand why he is allowing um, this stuff. <clears throat> They're trying to show how primitive it is invading countries. Maybe if they shame Russia, other countries will think twice repeating the same mistake. Well, uh, if that were the case, then they would be talking about what we're doing in Russia. They would be talking about what we what we're doing. I mean, what we're doing in uh, Yemen, what we're doing in Syria. We're currently occupying Syria. We just bombed Somalia a couple days ago. Um, uh, what we did in Libya, et cetera, et cetera. I I just really want I I, I want somebody. I want somebody to explain this to me. If, if you think that Zelensky is really a hero and that the Ukrainians were justified in amending their, their state constitution to bring them closer to NATO, which is an obvious and clear threat towards Russia, Russia and its interests, um, please, please call me. I'd like to have a conversation with you because I genuinely don't understand.